this is going to be a fun afternoon out fishing for largemouth bass. Largemouth large bass. Large bass. 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 I am very happy to be on the board. Home out. Go try some smallmouth bass. Me and my good fishing buddy here, Jack, we're going to go out on a little lake near here and we're going to try to catch some largemouth bass through the ice. So we're actually going to keep a few largemouth bass to eat. Eat. Shut up, shut up, shut up. Let's see what we got here. Oop, it's moving a little. There we go. We got this one, Jack. It's our target species. Oh, whoo. I'm going to keep this guy. We're gonna, we're gonna let this guy go. A walleye, wow, a nice walleye, look at this. What a bonus, huh? I think I'm gonna let this guy go. Huh? Oh, there he is, yep, something there. This'll be a perfect one for flaying out. Flaying out. Flaying out. Welcome to Angling Buzz Ice presented by Fleet Farm and yes, we're going to be talking about bass fishing through the ice. If you're looking for something fun to catch or if you want to catch something bigger than your standard bluegill and crappie, bass are a great species to target. To start, we're going to show you how to catch and target largemouth bass using live imaging. There it is. Got him. Boy, is that subtle or what? Smallmouth bass can be tricky through the ice, but once you find them, they're usually stacked up. It's amazing how concentrated these smallmouth bass can be. Part of the fun of ice fishing is the gear. We're going to show you how one tournament angler tricks out his four-wheeler. Any ice fisherman can use these same concepts and ideas for their machine and have a successful ice fishing season. We're also going to show you some cool products for ice fishing and a new flip-over house design. Finally, we'll show you an effective way to catch largemouth bass. That there is like hard to beat to find bass, to find and catch bass. And if you want to harvest a couple, we've got an awesome blackened bass recipe for you. Up first, we're going to join Jeremy Smith as he shows us how to use Mega Live to find and catch largemouth bass. This is going to be a fun afternoon out fishing for largemouth bass. I love catching big fish, and largemouth are a critter that gets overlooked for ice fishing, but they can be caught. They're challenging. Of course, largemouth get big. They're much bigger than crappies or sunnies, which you spend a lot of time fishing for. And I'm going to use a technology that is live imaging, so forward-facing sonar to help me find and catch these largemouth bass. Now, one of the things that I've found in bass fishing in the winter is the key is vertical standing cover. Green weeds are great. Everybody says look for green weeds. Of course, it's great if you can find them when they're green, but if the weeds are standing straight up and down, they're magnets for largemouth. And I just cut a hole with this Mega Live here, and I've, it's, it's just amazing. I'm able to see exactly where the weed line is, and I'm targeting the edge of the weeds and I can also see where the densest and most vertical stands of weeds are in a 50 foot area. That's what I'm looking at around here. And also I'm seeing little schools of minnows and bass. So it, it's, it's pretty crazy. If you look right here, 15 feet in front of me, I've got a, a great weed edge. It actually looks like there's a bass. Oh, he's moving, he's going back into the cover. That's just right next to the thickest clump of weeds here. So imagine that, the fish are right on the weed line. And as I scan up this way, the, it gets a lot shallower, the weeds get a lot thicker, but just looking in this direction in front of me, yep, there's a nice little chunk of weeds 15 feet this way that I can see some bass. So I'm gonna go jump ahead and go try to catch some largemouth bass and I'll share with you how I catch them. 
I love these electric augers. This year they've got the light flight bit, which is amazing if you haven't used these. This makes the auger so lightweight, but they've got new batteries too, so it's a bigger, more powerful battery, but this is kind of a cool feature. It's got that little USB charging port on there too, so it's kind of handy for charging whatever. It's just a nice little portable power block as well as a great auger battery. Of course, whether it's ice fishing or open water, matching the rod, the reel, the line, to the presentation is, is really critical. And I'm primarily fishing with most of my panfish stuff, not even necessarily the, the walleye stuff. So here is a 30 inch light, extra fast rod. So it's got a, you can see that the tip on it is uh, super fast, but doesn't take hardly anything to show signs of, of a bite. And then the other one I'm fishing the slab wrap with is, is the perch seeker. So they're really panfish rods. And then I just bump up the line. So my go-to line for largemouth fishing is I like fishing with a four pound mono. I love Suffolk's Advanced Mono. That's absolutely hands down my favorite monofilament for ice fishing. A little largey, tiny guy, but I will take it. And then I just use a six pound fluorocarbon leader on the end of that, and that, that works perfect. And the size 1,000 or 2,000 reel is all you need. So I, I can promise that you've got the equipment for catching largemouth through the ice. Really the only difference is you want to up the size of the main line. And again, I really like fishing with four pound mono, that suffix advanced four pound is just tough as nails, but it's thin. And uh, if you wanted to fish a braid, you're fishing inside more, absolutely go with the braid. But I just fish outside mostly, so I like the mono. There, look at that, how subtle that is. Uh, oh, their bites are so subtle. Just amazing. I had one. Just blows you away that these fish, in the summertime, you throw a spinner bait, a buzz bait, they can just fly up and just smash stuff. And then when it comes to winter time, especially midwinter, they are just so finicky. I mean, their mouths are huge, but they'll bite tiny little baits and I'm using a, a rod right now with a really sensitive tip because so often the bite is just extremely subtle. And so you just have to sit and watch and it's almost always just the subtlest little movement, just a slight little down pull. And that's, that's all it is for these guys most of the, most of the time. There it is. Got him. Boy, is that subtle or what? Oh. And they're so obvious, they just move so slow. Oh. <laughs> but I love them. I love them, I love them. Now in a couple months here, right after the ice goes out, you can go to most lakes where the season's open for largemouth bass and they're about the easiest fish to catch that there is. You just get something in front of them and they love biting. But this wintertime deal is a totally different program. Oh, it can just be so darn finicky. And this is, this is what's amazing. I can't really think of, maybe with the exception of something late ice, where they're not always hooked right there. Usually that pad right in the front of their mouth is where you, is where you end up hooking them. It's just right, right there. Cool. Not a giant fish, but hey, I am very happy to be on the board with the great, great largey here. And I had to make the switch from the slab wrap to a little bitty jig like that, and that's... What it took to get this guy to bite. Beauty, beauty. There you are, Mr. Bass. Down you go. If I was bluegill fishing, I'd fish, you know, a 32nd or 64th ounce, something like that. But I'm fishing these bass. I'm actually fishing a 16th here. Just something a little bit heavier. It's, it's just nice to feel that, feel the jig a little bit more. And I feel like having a heavier jig helps you pick up that bite just a little bit more. So I do use a slightly heavier jig. Goodness. No. Just got denied by two fish. Two? Yep, it was cool. I saw him on the camera. I saw him on live. This live imaging is hands down the most impressive technology that I've seen come along in fishing since mapping. I mean, it is truly amazing how much easier it is to find fish, but also how much you can learn with just, just by looking at how the fish move. You can see the number of fish. You're not just watching something as it's represented in a vertical column. You're seeing it nearly three-dimensionally. And so there, there's just so much to learn in that regard. Now, I have two units out here, however. This, 
Live unit is great for finding fish. If you're setting down, you can use down mode that I have it in right now. It's really great. You can have multiple anglers watching what's going on below you. But if I'm hole hopping like I am today, I still really like having the traditional you know, Helix 7 ice setup. That way it can, it's, a, it's a lot easier to be mobile with that one, but really, ooh, here's a bass right here. If you were gonna just choose to have one piece of technology today for fishing or ice fishing, gosh, that was a big fish. It would have to be the, the, the Mega Live unit. It is just absolutely stunning what you can see, what you can learn. It's an amazing, amazing piece of technology. He's just slithering right below, not gonna make a move, or are you gonna make a move? Oh, this one's playing around for it though. Right there, see him, he's coming. And got him. That was cool, swam by, investigated, and just said, you know what? That is just too tempting, a little red worm. How could I say no to that? Every day is an experiment out here. Oh gosh. Sometimes they want something big. You know, what? one of the things that's blown us away is we've run little micro cameras out here a fair bit too. And we've got a ton of shots of bass's gill rakers. They'll come and eat that little camera. So they can eat big stuff and they like eating big shiner minnows, but you know, some days when you're fishing with the artificial program, it's a, it's a hair jig, it's a slab wrap, it's a, you know, a bigger bait, but a lot of times day in, day out, once again, just that tiny little BMC probe jig, one maggot, that's all, that's all it takes. If you're looking to do something fun through the ice, you're looking for that midday bite, you want to catch something a little bigger than sunnies and crappies, or perch and you know you're waiting for that walleye window to happen in the evening, check out largemouth bass, man. They, you can actually have some really great action doing, doing this. They pull really hard and it really is no wonder why these are America's favorite sport fish and they still can be even through the ice. See you, dude. Finding largemouth bass through the winter can be relatively easy, but smallmouth bass can be a challenge but when you do land on them, the number below you can be absolutely staggering. Big bass down below. It's a good sign though. It is, yeah. Tomahawk bass are one of those fish that if you can find them in shallower depths, they are super challenging. Jake, you got one? Yes, sir. Really fun, and when you land on them, Homo. there are so many fish there. There we go. First one of the morning. You could fish 30 spots on this lake and never see a single smallmouth bass, and then you land on one spot that's 50 yards by 50 yards, and there's literally hundreds of fish there. So we're gonna have a, a, a little bit of fun with these guys today, and we'll share with you a little bit more about smallmouth bass through the ice. Okay, so this is good, this is rolling. Lower, set it in there, see what it does. It's amazing how concentrated these smallmouth bass can be. And a number of years ago in Minnesota, they changed the regulations to be a catch and release only for smallmouth bass on the 15th of uh, September. And that's simply to protect these fish because when they are wadded up like this, it is absolutely crazy how many fish can be in one spot. I mean, Jake and I are just a few feet away and we both got multiple fish on the screen Oh yeah, we got three on the screen. One for you here. There he is. Look at that. There we go. Just took a little competition to get them going. They are so much fun in the winter. Oh yeah. There we go on the coffin spoon, but just barely hooked. I mean, the bite is such a soft bite. They mark so nice, don't they? Yeah, they really do. They, uh, there's no question. With both largemouth and smallmouth, it's so often like I had a fish down there just eyeballing it, eyeballing it, eyeballing it. They could not make him bite. And he was like, they'll, they'll cover up your jig where it's like you can't tell the difference between your jig and the fish, but they still don't have it. And then all of a sudden another fish shows up on the screen and they bite it. They, they really, it really does seem like you gotta have a few fish around end up talking one of them into biting. Here we go, but it was just, I mean, such a light bite. Oh yeah, nice fish. 
Oh, there he is. Look at that fish. Look how thick it is, my goodness. Just a little football. Awesome, all right, let's fire back. You know, it really amazes me. For such a big fish, the bite is so subtle. You know, it's more like a panfish bite, like we've been saying. So it's important to use the right setup. And what I've been using today is the St. Croix Premier Ice Rod Combo. Now I've got the 36 inch rod in a medium power. And what's real nice about this is you've got enough backbone to handle these bigger fish, you know, two, three, four pounders. And, uh, but it's still got a sensitive tip so you can really detect those light bites. And I've just got it paired up with some six pound suffix advanced mono, down to a little barrel swivel, down to a uh, coffin spoon with a waxworm on it. Got him, there we go. I landed on a hole that had a bunch of them in it. And here it is, let's see. Ooh, nice one. Nice, isn't that great? That is such a cool deal. It does seem like it's kind of interesting that I was, like these, there's a bunch of holes around me, like these three holes, and, I, and they were in like 18, and now I came out to 21. And uh, there's fish all over in 21, like it looked like a school of crappies here, and the ones that were shallower wouldn't bite, and I just got down there and it was bam. Such a beautiful fish. So let me get this guy back and explain kind of the habitat that you're looking for to find smallmouth bass. Now typically I would say they're, they're near flats, and this is a flat out in front of us here. It's a big sand flat, but it's got a pretty sharp edge that drops into the basin. I mean, it's 60, 80 feet behind us. And one common feature that I've seen with a lot of good smallmouth habitat is there will be some type of big rock down there. And this is doesn't have a ton of rocks around it, but there are quite a few rocks in this area that are like those great big boulders. And they do seem to, to like those areas. However, I've found smallmouth wintering holes on, you know, just an 18 foot sand grass flat. So they can be in a number of different places, but typically if you're looking to find smallmouth wintering areas, you're looking for deeper flats that have some type of a, like a big, you know, big boulders on top of them. It doesn't have to be carpeted with them, but it can be a, a sandy bottom with a big boulder here, a couple big boulders there just kind of scattered about, and these fish will just mill around that, around that area. You'll see them, they're just like at a slow pace. They're just kind of wandering over here, and then they're making their way back there, and they're, but they're never leaving the area. That's the whole deal, is once you find where they're, where they're at, I mean, they're not gonna leave this, this stretch for the next, well, basically from November until March, they're just gonna be here April, whenever the ice goes out. There we go, nice. Little guy though, but we'll take him. So much spunk, even for the smaller ones. They just put up a good fight. There we go. Drip and wraps and just kill him it today. Beauty, fire him back. You know, that last fish came on the Rapala Ultralight Rip and Wrap, and this thing's been working great today. So it's a size three, I think in the hot steel color. Um, but some other baits that we've been catching them on have been a Northland coffin spoon. We paired it with a few waxworms. There we go, on the coffin spoon. Jerry's been having a bunch of success on the VMC Mongo jig. You know, he's paired that with a couple spikes, a couple waxies, and he's been catching the crap out of them with that. Why I like it, it's a bigger hook it's got a bigger hook gap than most little panfish jigs. And you can see it's like when they hit it, it's like it's perfectly designed to just fit right in that little pad of a, of a large mouth or a small mouth's upper jaw. I have also had some good luck here using buckshot spoons here with a dropper chain. So you got, you know, big enough, calls them in, it's got a rattle, but below it's got the dropper chain, so it's got something smaller to key in on. And the last but not least has been the wrap wood jig and wrap. You know, we've had a bunch of success on a variety of different baits, but the real key has been how we've been working them. You know, it's been real subtle, right? These bass don't want to chase. So it's been real just pounding on the spot and letting those fish come to you. Oh, we got a monster, people. Oh, and look what it ate right there. A little swirl drop kick unhooked. Oh, what a beauty. Pop right off, put there. Perfect, another great big smallmouth bass. We've had a fantastic day catching tons of big fish. We've put our work in, drilling a number of holes, but watching fish on Mega Live on the 2D, we've been able to stay on them when we're never in a lull. We've been catching these Doubled things. Doubled in. One after the other. Bad, nice double up, it's been awesome. 
go try some smallmouth bass next time you're out on the ice. They really are a blast. Sweet, off they go. Eat it. Now, if you're gonna target smallmouth bass, you're gonna wanna watch your depth. The reason is barotrauma. Barotrauma refers to injuries or trauma caused by changes in barometric or water pressure. In numerous studies, certain fish have exhibited increased mortality due to the effects of angling barotrauma. In general, most studies have shown a dramatic increase in mortality when fish are caught in depths exceeding roughly 33 feet. So basically, unless you plan on harvesting the fish you catch, don't target them deep. Now we're gonna switch gears to something every ice angler can appreciate, gear. To start off, we're gonna join ice tournament angler, Sean, as he shows off his tricked out four-wheeler. To rig this out, uh, we wanted to be able to have rods handy, ice augers handy, uh, your equipment handy, the Hummingbird Mega Live, be able to use that efficiently. We well, wanted to have my rods. I wanted to have my rods in cases pulling them in and out. So we built a component system using the clam rod holders, quick and easy. Have multiple rods available. You can fish to your hole, back to your machine, you're not in and out of rod bags all day long. We also have on the ram mount our uh, hummingbird helix for navigation. We got our map chips, your map of your lake, all your waypoints. Keeps you the, your information right in front of you as you're traveling along the lake. You move to the front of it, running off the bumper. I run both augers. I run a search auger. I run a six inch uh, tournament hole auger. So it makes them handy. You can quickly remove, be fishing on the move, go over your holes, come back, quickly attach back to your ATV, and you can move on to your next location. Moving to the back of the machine, we had it on, bolted on a uh, drop rack. We bolted on some, some gun rod holders we used for auger holders. Got one mounted up just for specifically for the Mega Live transducer. We're gonna drill a hole, quickly insert it down next to the machine. Got our Mega Live where we can quickly scan the ice. Back of the machine on the drop rack. We got a bucket, areas for storage, whether it's your camera search camera, storage for batteries, extra batteries to run all your augers, and they've got a nebulous uh, float. Uh, what's unique with the Polaris, Polaris ATVs, they have a front uh, storage compartment where you can store extra gloves, sunglasses, you have additional uh, Aquaview camera, jig boxes, anything handy, light, all in the flames equipment you're going to carry with you. Quick, efficient, lock up, you're not digging through tackle bags, you can be efficient and on the move. These are a lot of designs we'll put into a tournament UTV, ATV machine. It can be efficient, light, mobile. As you move from spot to spot, hole to hole, covering whole lake. Any ice fisherman can use these same concepts and ideas for their machine as they fish from first ice to late ice and have a successful ice fishing season. Now, if you're an angler that likes to punch a lot of holes, stay on the move, and find fish, the StrikeMaster Lithium 40 volt light is the auger for you. Now, this auger comes with built-in LED lights, forward and reverse, but my favorite part about the StrikeMaster Lithium 40 volt light is the battery life. Overall, this is just an awesome, lightweight auger, and if you're an angler looking to upgrade your ice auger this season, I highly recommend the StrikeMaster Lithium 40 volt light. Now the next product I want to talk about is another one geared to those anglers that like to hole hop around and search for fish, and that's the Aquaview Micro Revolution 5.0 Pro. Now it's got a 5 inch LCD screen, it's got 60 feet of cable, it's got DVR recording capabilities, it's just a great tool for searching and destroying panfish, bass, walleye, and more. Now this next one's for you wheelhouse fishermen, and it's the Rapala Smart Hub System. Now you can adjust and customize it however you see fit. It's got a number of different attachments from rod holders to adjustable arms, rattle reels. It's a great way to maximize your fishing experience in your wheelhouse. Hummingbird Mega Live is a game changer out on the ice. 
Forward-facing sonar has really come on the scene the past few years and it is making a big difference for ice anglers. It allows you to see fish, how they're reacting to your bait, see how they're moving, see the type of structure down there. It's such a valuable tool to finding fish and seeing schools of fish. If you haven't checked out Hummingbird Mega Live, I highly recommend you do so because it truly is a game changer out on the ice. Now new to clam this year is the Vertex Glove and this glove was designed for anglers fishing in the harshest conditions. It's got 133 grams of insulation. It's breathable, windproof, and waterproof. It comes in sizes from small to double XL and it is the glove to keep your hands warm and dry in the frigid conditions this winter. Now ice camping's been all the rage the past few years, but whether you're ice camping, spending time in a fish house, spending time at a resort, or using a lot of electronics, the Dakota Lithium Power Box is a great mobile power box option. It has two built-in USB ports, a 12 volt socket, and binder posts, so you can charge a number of different appliances. It has built-in LED lights, and it's just really helpful in a number of situations out on the ice. Now, St. Croix got a new series of ice rods this year, the Scandic series, and this one happens to be my favorite. It's a 36 inch medium power rod, and it's great for multi-species, right? Bass, walleye, northern pike, whitefish, whatever you want to catch, it's a great rod for that. So they've got rods from 24 inches up to 36 inches, and powers from ultra light to heavy. So whatever you want to target, there's a Scandic series out there for you. The Daiwa QZ750 is a great compact size ice fishing reel. Fits a lot of line on here. It's got a really smooth drag system, so it's great, you know, if you happen to run in one of those big pike while you're fishing for panfish. It's just a really universal reel for bluegills, crappies, bass, and walleye. Now, this show is all about bass, and one rod we used a lot to catch them is the Tuned Up Custom Rods Fusion. Now it's a light rod with a moderate fast action. It's got a solid carbon fiber blank in sizes from 28 inches up to 36 inches. It's got the recoil guides and it loads up into some great backbone. Now the next generation of Pinhead Minnow is here with the jointed Pinhead Pro Minnow. Now what's unique about this is they're constructed with zinc alloy, which is environmentally friendly it gives off a bunch of detail to the baits and they have a really unique flash in the water. It comes in four different sizes from 1 32nd ounce up to a quarter ounce and they have a variety of different colors for whatever you're chasing. Now I know this is a bass show but here we've got a couple new pre-rigged tungsten plastics from Northland and this is the tungsten mayfly and the tungsten mini smelt. Now these come in two different sizes 1 28th ounce or 1 16th ounce. They come in a variety of different colors and uh, they also double as a great largey bait as well. Hot off the press this year are two new baits, one from Rapala and one from VMC. The first one is the VMC Bull Spoon. Now the VMC Bull Spoon gives off a dying minnow action which really triggers those big bluegills into biting and the crappies can't resist it either. Now, new to Rapala this year is the Jigging Shadow Wrap. Now, this is a big fish bait. It's got a really unique darting action similar to a jigging wrap. If you're going to be targeting big fish, the Rapala Jigging Shadow Wrap is what you're going to want to have tied on. Here I've got Suffix Invisalign Ice Fluorocarbon. Now, it comes in sizes from 2 pound up to 8 pound. It's super strong, abrasion resistant, and it is a must have if you're going to be targeting big fish in clear water this season. For anglers looking for the best two-person shelter out on the market, look no further than the Clam Voyager Thermal XT. Now the XT design maximizes the height space. You have a bunch of headroom and a bunch of floor room. You have 23 cubic feet of fishable area. This one happens to be their ice team version and it comes standard with a light bar, We've got storage underneath the seats. We've got side pocket storage and overhead storage. Now, me being a taller guy, these side entry doors are awesome. It makes entry and exit a breeze. The Clam Voyager Thermal XT is an awesome two-man shelter, and I highly, highly recommend you check one out today. Now, that wraps up cool products. Make sure to head to your local fleet farm or shop online where you can find most of this awesome gear. Now, ice fishing gear always seems to be making advancements, and clams fish traps are no exception.
The original fish trap was created by Dave Gens over 40 years ago, and Clam today continues to evolve their fish traps to make them even better for today's angler. And we take all of that information from the consumer and we apply that to our fish houses. I'd love to show you some of those advancements that we've made in this year's lineup. So one thing you'll notice with Clam's new fish traps is they are XT. The majority of these houses, you would think the XT is for extra tough, but it actually stands for extra tall. So we've added extra space, whether it's on our two-person shelters or one-person shelters, so you can easily enter and exit the fish house without having to bend over. On our two-person models, we've added true side doors. With the new XT side doors on the clam fish traps, it's easy in, easy out, lots of space. You're not stepping over your gear. You're not stepping into holes. It makes everything even more accessible. One addition with that added space is that anglers have gravitated towards longer fishing rods and now you've got enough room for those monster hook sets as well. These are all heavy duty exteriors, insulated. In our X series, you've got 90 grams of insulation per meter, 900 denier fabric, super heavy duty. Goes along with our tubs, which are co-extruded. So you can actually find in that gray interior anything that you might drop inside of your fish house while you're out there on the water. We're gonna end things off today with a simple and effective way to catch largemouth bass. And if you wanna harvest a couple of the smaller ones, Mike's got an awesome blackened bass recipe. All right, today's mission is catching largemouth bass. Me and my good fishing buddy here, Jack, we're gonna go out and we're gonna to try to catch some largemouth bass through the ice. And we're actually gonna keep a few largemouth bass to eat. Now before all you bass rats get all up in arms about me keeping a few bass, I'll explain as we go along why I'm doing it and how bass are actually a really plentiful game fish up here. And there's a lot of lakes where there's a lot of small bass and it actually can be a good thing to keep a few. So we're gonna go out and cut some holes and find some bass. All right, so I've been on this lake a number of times before and I know this general zone has bass, but one thing about bass, is they're very curious fish. So what I'm gonna do is just go take my little auger here, cut a handful of holes, look around, see how the weeds are, and see if the fish are there. One of the handiest tools you can have for finding bass and panfish, especially in shallow water, is this little guy. If they're there, they'll show themselves right away. Yep, nobody home there, we'll keep moving. Basically, we're on a pretty good sized lake, and this is a big bay. Weeds, so this is a spot that holds bass year round so I'm just going to punch some holes and look to see if I can find them first before I put any lines down. Signs of life, a bass and a couple bluegill so I think what I'm going to do is start fishing here since I'm seeing life. Basically going to throw down a tip up and a minnow on one for my one line and then a jig with another line. So bass are like I said earlier you know they're catchable in the winter time I mean a lot more than people think. I've been doing it for quite a while and hands down my favorite way to catch them or the most effective way to catch them is on a shiner minnow like this. Just a three to four inch shiner minnow on a plain hook. And right now we're in a shallow weedy bay, there's green weeds down there and we're only in like six or seven foot of water so I'm literally putting this minnow down, not even an arm length down because they're riding high above the weeds so it's really shallow water. And um, in these weeds, you'll find pockets where there's big tall weeds that grow almost up to the surface. So you don't wanna just uh, blindly drill a hole and put a line down, because when your minnow's down there, it'll swim around and get tangled in the weeds and you won't be fishing. So after I cut my holes, I check with this camera to see if there's a good radius around the hole where the minnow's gonna be so that my minnow isn't gonna get hung up. So that way I know the fish will come into this opening, see the minnow, take the line out, and I won't get all tangled up in the weeds. So kind of a method to the madness here. Wow, that didn't take long. I don't even have my, I don't even have my other lines. Holes drilled yet and the swag's up already. That's a good sign. Let's see what we got here. Is anybody home? Oh, there he is. Yep, there's something there. Got a feeling it's a pike by the way he's fighting. What do you think, Jack? Nope, it's our targeted species. Look at that, Jack, yay! Huh, that's what we came for. 
right there. That took all of five minutes. And that's what I'm telling you, these shiners are deadly for bass. Now what I'm going to do is I was talking about keeping a fish. And I'm not just going to keep any fish, I'm going to keep fish that are in a certain slot. Like I'm not out to kill big fish. I want to keep fish that are like in the 11 to 14 inch range. So I brought a stick with to measure them. And if they're in between 11 to 14, this will be a perfect one for filleting out. Right? Huh? Let's go see if we can get another one. So basically, you can use whatever you want for hooks, leaders, and line, but my preference is standard 20 pound, no, no freeze tip up line on there, a barrel swivel, and a sinker. And then I uh, got a about a three to four foot lead of 10 to 12 pound fluorocarbon and putting a couple shot down there because these big shiners can be really active and this, this shot keeps the minnow down in their face more instead of it getting it way out there. And then I prefer these wide bend hooks. Oh, you know, the old school type Kaylees they're called. That's my uh, go-to setup here with a, a nice uh, lively shiner on there. That there is like, Hard to beat to find bass, to find and catch a bass. Look at this guy back down. You can see here's my knot. I just put a slip bobber knot there for my marker. So real easy, doesn't catch on the ice as much, but um, I'm only fishing four to five feet down. So kind of cool. We'll be back. Oh, come on. Oh man, that was a big fish. Come on. Come on. Come on, oh, there he is, come on. Come on. Oh, he bumped it, come on. There, I got him. This is a big fish. This is a big fish. Now I gotta get my line out of there, come on. Yeah, this is a good one. This one came in as a big old red mark. Disappeared and came back. It's probably a big pike, but going to be my guess, but still, it's really fun. What do we got here? A walleye. Wow, a nice walleye. Look at this. What a bonus, huh? Look at this thing. <laughs> I'm not going to argue with that. That is a good fish. So yeah, I just, it's, geez, it's two in the afternoon, bright sunny sky, five feet of water, and I've been seeing some marks coming in, and they weren't biting. And basically all I'm using is this little uh, small, the smallest of the slab wraps, wrap with slab wrap, you can see. And I just tipped it with a little maggot in case a big crop of your sunny came in. But yeah, this guy came in and cracked her pretty good. So I think I am going to take a look at this guy. And there we go. Fun bonus, we're after bass and we get a nice walleye. All right, I think I'm gonna let this guy go. Cool, well that was fun and I guess I'd say unexpected. You don't often think about catching a walleye in the middle of the day in six feet of water, but that's fishing for you. I'm just gonna talk quick about a little bit about the couple rods I'm using to jig for bass and also walleye, I guess, but um, basically I'm using, I call it light walleye tackle and even sometimes panfish tackle. You don't need really heavy stuff to target these bass. I, I've got three and four pound line on both of these rods. So this, both the rods I'm using today are tuned up custom rods. Uh, this one here happens to be a precision 32 inch. It's got a little bit faster tip and a more backbone up here. Um, Good for using bigger baits like this, jigging wraps, slab wraps, ripping wraps, stuff like that, um, with four pound line. And I did put a swivel on here and a snap for changing baits and for lure spin. And the other one I got is a Fusion, and this one's a 36 inch rod. It's a bit longer and it's got a little slower action, um, a little more parabolic, I guess I would say. But this is like really, it looks like it might be wimpy for bass, but it actually works really good. It's also good for fishing for big crappies and trout and stuff. But the deal is, is when you're fishing a big fish like that and you're getting the head bucks, this rod absorbs the shock with the long and longer and softer. So you can be fighting a fish and you don't have to worry about playing it with your drag. The rod itself is fight, you know, fighting the fish 
up and down and you can give and not have to worry about the line snapping. So these two rods here, and then on, I guess with this rod, I should say, I'm just using a soft plastic. So I just got a tungsten head with a black soft plastic on here. And soft plastics work really good for bass. Um, they can be surprisingly finicky, a big fish with a big mouth, and they will just come up and grab these little things by the tail and sometimes not grab them at all. But they're really delicate biters when it comes to you know biting little lures. And um, if I find them having fish come up that aren't biting well, um, looking at these two lures and not biting, I'll often rig a third rod or have another rod handy and just rig it with a, basically it's a bluegill jig or a crappie jig. It's, this is, happens to be a tungsten tubby jig, but any tungsten jig, horizontal or vertical, with either a waxworm or a maggot. And this actually catches a lot of bass. You'd be surprised. Ooh. See what we got here. Ooh, nice bass. And this is a this is a good bass here. This one's quite a bit bigger, so this is probably a a 15 incher. So we're gonna we're gonna let this guy go. Ooh, there we go. We got this one, Jack. We got this one. I think it's gonna be a pike. Nope, it's our target species. Oh, -hoo. look at that. That's perfect. That's like a 12 incher right there. So when I'm out looking for a couple bass to keep, this is like the perfect size bass. A lake like this, you know, you can come here in the summertime and catch, you know, 50, 60 bass, and a lot of them are gonna be this size. So you're not doing any harm by removing a few fish this size from it. In fact, you might be helping it a little. So I'm gonna keep this guy. If I get any bigger ones, they're going back. All right. Yeah, this guy's a little bit big, but see what I got it on? A little plastic, and see where he is, right in the beak. It wasn't like a killer day. We ended up getting a few fish to bring home, and we're gonna do blackened bass. So bass are a great fish for doing this with. They're a coarser grained fish, um, kind of like a redfish or a striper that, but I've had really good luck blackening bass. So we're gonna take these two bass that I ended up keeping today, go home and blacken some bass. So how exactly do you blacken fish? Well, the proper way to do it is to take this butter, melt it down in a bowl, you take these bare fish fillets, you dip them in butter, put them on a plate, and then you sprinkle this seasoning all over the buttered fish. Then you put them in this pan that's over gas heat that's really extremely hot. I'm gonna sort of do it the cheater method that it's a little less messy. So the first thing you want to do is season the fish. So I'm going to take this uh, black and red fish magic and you can make your own, you can look up online and you can make black and seasoning of your own, but it's, this is like the main dude who did it back in the day and this is the good stuff. So I just went and got a bottle of this stuff. I'm going to take it and I'm going to sprinkle it just a nice even layer over all four sides of these fish. And then what I'm going to do is flip them over and do the same on the other side. So now we've got both sides of the fish covered and we're gonna go outside, set up our pan and get the heat going. And this is like really a quick process. So once you got it here, you're gonna melt your butter down and then you're ready to roll. And as you can see, it's pretty, it's pretty smoky. So this is definitely why you wanna do this outside. So we're gonna get this half a stick of butter, melt it all the way down. All right, so we got us. Just gonna let it go for like another minute here to really heat her up. All right, like I said, this is the kind of my cheating way of doing it. It's not the exact way, but it works. I found it works really well and you get the same effect. So we're gonna drop our fish in. This thing's smoking really good. level out the butter here a little bit. This only takes like a minute and a half on each side. It's gonna, this pan is like super hot. So we're, uh, they're curling up already. So we're gonna give her a little bit here. All right, so our minute and a half to, I guess two minutes is up. We're gonna flip it and there we go. We're getting good and black right there. It's just seared black on the side. We're gonna do the same thing here. 
flip these four over and give it about the same amount on the other side. And we're done. And there you have it, black and largemouth bass. So next time you're out fishing on a lake that has a lot of small to medium sized bass, don't be afraid to keep a couple of them and try them out. This recipe works great. That wraps up this episode of Angling Buzz Ice. Make sure to head to our website where you can sign up for our newsletter. We'll also be releasing new content each week on our social platforms. Thanks for watching and we've got an awesome ice season ahead of us.